Hello, hello, guys. New life on my Instagram account. This time with a new guest. So, waiting for you to join. How is it going with everyone? I hope that things are good. Your family, hope you're in good health. It's been a long time since we didn't go live. So, this is a live after, I guess, after two weeks, yes, of absence. Um, we couldn't, of course, each time I try to do a live and I can't do it. The problem is uh, the internet connection. So I hope that this time uh, the internet connection helps. And today uh, I'm back with a new guest. And uh, I didn't actually mention this in the stories before. I didn't say that I, I will be live with you. Uh, and this is due to, to some problems. Uh, I think that Mary didn't inform me that she was up to the live until the last minute, so we couldn't. So I don't know if Mary is already here. So guys, this live also will be focusing on our uh, topic. We will be having like an, um, an interview with Mary, but mainly we'll be trying to we'll be trying to uh, uh, to to start this live and uh, and receive your questions, guys. If you have some questions for me or for Mary, just put them in. There is a, a question box like here under the live, uh, so you can click it and. Type your question there, and uh, Mary and I will answer all your questions uh, gladly. We'll gladly answer your questions, of course. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, guys. So Mary is already here. I'll try to send her or invite her. Yeah, guys, this is your live, so feel free to uh, to ask questions, to interact, uh, hearts. Yes. Put some hearts there. And, uh, expecting all your. So Mary is already here. Send this live to your friends. Let them know about our live. Uh, it's gonna be. I think, and a big line, sure. Yes, with your questions, with your interaction. So, yeah, send me whatever question you want. We are answering all types of questions related to English learning. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi there. Hello, Mary. Hello. How are you? You're good. How are you? Um, great. It's, I'm so happy actually to have you here in this, in tonight. Um, okay, nice to hear. Yeah, you're, you're in Madrid now, right? Yes, yes, yes. I'm in Madrid at the moment. Yeah, I, I used to, uh, I, I was just watching the news, like, I don't know, two days ago, and I saw <laughs> people very happy there. Yeah. The snow, <laughs> and people are skiing. Is it the first time snowing there? No, not the first time, but it's never snowed so much, apparently, since 1945. <laughs> yeah, it did snow very hard there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been snowed under for like well, a week now, so, no joke. Still now? Still snowing now? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's still there. Yeah, it's frozen now, which is worst. <laughs> oh. Yeah, 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 it's quite dangerous, quite dangerous. For the cars yeah. and everything, but I have to say it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So Mary, it's uh, would like to know you first. Would like to start with this uh, uh, the question I used to ask my guests here. Uh, okay. Mary, tell us about yourself. How did you start? Where are you now? What you doing for a living? Um, everything. We want to know everything. 
Okay, okay, okay. Well, um, I have to say I'm originally Spanish. Okay, I've always loved language. I started speaking English when I was two years old. And um, I wasn't trying to become an English teacher, to be honest. When I, when I was studying, I studied business at uni. Yeah. So I've always loved the English language. Uh, and that's why as soon as I finished, I just left to London. When did you leave London? When I finished uni, I was 22 back then. Yeah. How old are you now? 26. Yeah. So it, it was uh, four years ago? Yeah. 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 I mean, I've always studied English with the, with the British and with the Irish here in Spain. So it's not by coincidence that I have this accent or anything like that. But it's true that I, I haven't, well, I've been living in the UK for not like 10 years, anything like that, for, for a short time. But I've always been exposed to this British English. Yeah, you were exposed to British English. And yeah. uh, when you started learning the English language at the first time, did you have like uh, preference to the British accent or are you just learning English in general? No, I had a reference. I had no, I had a reference uh, for the British English because I started in a British and Irish academy mm -hmm. here in Spain, and it was that was the rule. Like the teachers had to be British or Irish, so the students could pick up the real accent. Yeah, did you choose to be a teacher? Was were you dreaming to be a teacher, or you just came in the way, found yourself a teacher? That's uh, serious. Or it was Actually, a dream. Or... Actually, that's a very good question. I was not trying. I didn't pretend to become a teacher. Um, the thing is, when I was in the, in the UK, in London, I was working at something very different. I was a headhunter, a recruiter, choosing people to work in investment banks. Uh, choosing people for what? For them to, to work in, um, in investment banks. Like ah, yes. pro programmers like C++, Java, okay, so they were programmers, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's an office job. I discovered afterwards that the office is not for me. <laughs> Nothing like that. You didn't like that? No, 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 I didn't. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Being in front of the screen like all day, I like to, I like people. I like people and I like to be with them all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. So th that was it. That was how certain teaching began. I mean, I have taught English in the past, but not quite seriously. It wasn't my my way of living or anything. But I discovered I liked teaching afterwards when I came back from from London. So, um, Mary, you were like now you were teaching for how long now? For three years, let's say, three years. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, doing this, doing this for a living for three years, but I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. So you teach uh, full. You are full time teacher, I think, right? Yeah. Yes, I am. So you're teaching in a private institution or public or? Yeah, in a public institution. Yeah. Sorry, in a public. No, in a private institution. Sorry. Ah, uh, in a private institution. So yeah. you're dealing in which uh, age group? Say again, sorry? Uh, you're dealing with which age? I mean, are you teaching teenagers? Or are you teaching adults? Or? Oh, at the beginning of the afternoon, because I work in the afternoon, which I absolutely love. I have kids. Uh, you work in the afternoon? <laughs> yes, 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 all afternoon long. Yes. So I have kids at the very beginning. Later, mm -hmm. I have teenagers in the middle of the, of the afternoon, in the evening. And uh, my favorite at the end of the day, I have adults and some mornings as well. So you're teaching all ages, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's great, it's great. You learn how to deal with everyone. Where do you find yourself? Uh, which age do you like? Teaching? Oh, my, my favorite are adults and teenagers by far. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on to be taught. Say again, say again. You, you think that kids are hard to be taught? You think they're <laughs> That's the thing, it depends on the kid. What about kids? What, what's wrong with you and kids? 
no, no, there's nothing wrong. I just prefer something else. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 kids are totally fine. But you really need to know the kids to be able to teach this person some English. Because, Science. yeah, 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 like every kid is a, is a world. So, so it's, uh, I find it more difficult. You can hear me, Mary, you can hear me pretty well, or there's a problem with my voice, you can hear me. Sometimes the connection, connection cracks a bit. Oh, uh, yeah, because some people type in here that my voice is not clear. Can you hear me, guys? Everyone can hear me? Uh, I think, yeah, since you can hear me, I think that everybody yeah. can. Yeah. So, uh, Mary, I would like to start with some questions. Uh, the, the, the goal behind this live and uh, the goal behind me inviting you to this live is to share your experience first with learning the language since you were, since your mother tongue is Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you learned English and you became an English teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. This is from a part. And from another part, or on the other hand, we want to help those people who want to start learning English okay. uh, to, uh, to help, <coughs> help them with some advice. Uh, mm -hmm. So pieces of advice which will uh, facilitate or which will make learning English fun, not make okay. English thing hard. Uh, oh, well, can you tell us, I mean, someone who's uh, speaking about adults now, not speaking about teenagers, because teaching teenagers and kids have some specific, like, uh, I think some, some characteristic that are, uh, mm -hmm. that are for school, okay? We, when we speak about teenagers, when we speak about kids, we speak about school, we speak about uh, other things, okay? We want to speak about those people who want to start learning English without uh, language centers, without uh, going to schools, without, without mm -hmm. going to language schools. Uh, people who want to make use of the, uh, of, the, of the resources that are online to learn English independently by themselves. And we want to guide them on how to start learning the English language. Normally, this is what I'm interested in. Uh, I try to help those people who are learning by themselves. So in your opinion, Mary, what are the methods or the ways that a new a beginner in the language can make use of? Or how can someone who, is, who doesn't know anything in the language to start learning the English language? Okay, well, for a start, so they I'm need to... Say again, say again. I spoke to you. Sorry. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Don't worry. No, no, no. Don't apologize, please. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's your profile. Come on. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, for a start, people who want to pick up a new language need to find an activity they like to, pe to pick it up easily. Because um, it's just something natural, I guess. When we have something new in front of us, something difficult, we just block. There's like a wall between us and the, and the language in this case. And for this wall to fall, for us to break this barrier there, we need to do something we like. So I normally recommend beginners to pick up a new hobby, for example, like something they have always wanted to do. You like photography? <clears throat> You pick up photography in English. You want to learn how to, I don't know, how to write. No, how to write, no. Um, I, always, I always use that example of the, of the photography thing, but it can actually be anything. Or running. You want to learn more about running, start reading about running in English. Be exposed to the language and something you are interested in. Right. So finding interest. This is. Uh, I have the same opinion. I usually tell I people basic. the first step or the thing that's going to be very, very important for you is to mm -hmm. find something you're interested in. Because exactly. when you're studying or when you're learning about something you love or you like mm -hmm. or you're passionate about, you will enjoy learning. And when you will enjoy learning, um, you'll never stop learning. Okay? Exactly. You will find uh, I mean, a big joy in learning, and uh, that's the Indeed. aim. So, uh, Mary, uh, 
can you give us would you give us some recommendation would you recommend something on youtube something online uh, mm -hmm. something a beginner can use to, to start learning english i recommend people to use skillshare skillshare.com skillshare it's, yeah skillshare.com so there's a big community around different hobbies where you can share your interests with so, you can if you're learning about photography you can share your interest with other people who like photography and start picking up language like this that's definitely my recommendation yeah so skill share mm -hmm. is it a website or an application yeah. there's a website skill share is it yeah. spelled like I think it's skillshare.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That one. That, that's the one. That's the one I recommend the most. Apart from okay, okay, if you're a beginner, if you're a beginner and you don't have a lot of vocabulary. I I always recommend to watch uh, a series or a film that you have already seen. Yeah. So if you miss some things and conversation, you can still follow what's happening. You can still follow the film. And like that, the 10 or 15 first minutes, sit down in front of the TV, um, take a pen, take a paper, and write down some vocab. Like yeah. it's gonna work only for the first 10, 15 minutes. Later, you're just you're just practicing, you're listening comprehension because you get you get very tired. Speaking an English, speaking a language or learning English is very tiring. It is. I've noticed that students get like, oh, I'm very tired, and they've only spoken. I know, I know that happens. So for the 10, 15 minutes. At the beginning of, of your session, you sit down, pick up some new vocab, write it down, and later you keep watching the film, the movie, the series, whatever, uh, practicing some other skills. Yeah, that, I think that, that will help a lot. And um, for, for people who are just beginners, um, what do you think, what, what is the first thing that we should, they should focus on? Uh, should we focus on vocabulary or uh, grammar or uh, should we learn phrases the first time? What is exactly? Mm -hmm. Is vocabulary the, the basic? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a mix of structured sentences and vocabulary, in my opinion. Because you need to understand the very basics, like, nice, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Things like that, things that happen in, in an everyday conversation. And vocabulary. No, grammar is not the first thing. No, 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 no. You can pick up vocabulary by being exposed to the language when you already understand, thanks to the vocabulary you've got. I think, Mary, maybe it's maybe you had the chance to be exposed more to English, to, to learn in English, to, to people speaking English and to English materials. You were surrounded with people speaking English. That's why you got this accent you have now, which is pretty cool that British accent mm -hmm. if I if you don't if you didn't tell me that you are you're you're Spanish and you were born in Spanish uh, you were born in Spain I wouldn't know because you sound okay. like British people and this is due to the fact that you were exposed to people speaking English and that's really important that's really decisive when you when you when you want to learn the language uh, some people they don't have this this chance to be exposed uh, they don't. They don't have someone around to speak to. So, what would you? What would you say to them? Uh, I mean, sitting in front of TV, watching series, watching movies. That but there are applications. applications. There are plenty of applications to to practice right now. Okay. Um. What's the name? Uh, uh, hello. Hello. Talk. Hello. Talk. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Talk. talk. Yes, Hello Talk is a very useful application where you just exchange languages. You just find friends and you exchange. So you teach the language and they teach theirs, which is very cool. Yeah, that's it. I think Hello Link, Hello, uh, Hello. Oh, it's a different one. It's a different one. Hello Talk, yes. 
Yes, and and hello is another. But both are quite useful. Yeah. So um, I think it's still the practice. If we if we can practice with someone uh, who is near to us, not online, it will be more useful than practicing. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Sure. Of course. Yeah. So but, uh, but anyways, anyways, with the internet. We're closer than ever to other people who want to learn, to communities of, of students, to, to people who want to share what they know, to audiovisual materials like YouTube, you said before, podcasts, Spotify, they are there for us. So it's easier than ever. Yeah, yeah. No, and no one can complain about the lack of materials now. <laughs> Everything is available with the internet. In 2021, you can't speak to someone about not finding an, an apartment to speak to. They're everywhere. But the problem is uh, with the person himself, uh, because if you if you are willing, if you have that, you know, that passion to learn in the language, <laughs> that desire, I don't think that uh, there will be excuses for you not to learn, uh, even if uh, if you don't have the internet, you will find a way. Yeah. So you, if you are passionate, if you yes, really... Yes. Of course, everything comes with motivation. You need yeah. to find your own motivation. It's true, we have the materials. Uh, we know what we should do. But there's like a big step between wanting to do something and actually doing it. So that's called motivation. Yeah, and um, one of the things I spoke to in one of my videos is to determine the goals. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that's one of the big mistakes, one of the big mistakes that English learners commit at their beginning is that they have this um, big goal, I want to learn English, and they don't specify what they want exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's really important. When you, when you want, for example, I, in the next two months, like this, in the next two months, uh, I, I should be able to like speak uh, about things related to airport, things related to medicine, things related to this. So specific goals will help you a lot, not like broad goals or big goals. Like I want to be fluent. Okay, okay, that's that, that's very big, yeah. Yeah. Like I want to speak English fluently. I want to be fluent in English. That's not a goal, actually. It's it's a big goal. Even you or me or anyone, even native speakers. I think they're still learning new words every day. Oh um, yes, learning... of course. Yeah, I still learning... learn. I still learn learn some words in my, in my own language every day, like yeah. reading or or listening to podcasts. Uh, it's incredible. You never stop learning a language. It's true. It's very true. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I've spoken to many native speakers from America, from uh, the UK, and they tell me the same thing. We're still learning. We learn. One of them say, I still learn two to three words every day, new yeah. words. So how about you? <laughs> you're a beginner, and uh, even if you can speak, that doesn't mean that uh, you're perfect. So everyone is still learning. Exactly. And three words today, three words tomorrow, three words... Yeah. Oh, the next, the following day, you know, 30 days yeah. in a month, bigger three weeks a day. The bigger your, your background of vocabulary, the much better you speak. So you need to build vocabulary. Vocabulary is your really important. Uh, Mary, uh, uh, some, sometimes some people, they're, let's say, they're quite good at speaking. They can speak. And uh, they don't have any problems communicating with others. They have no problem understanding other people. Uh, when they hear, when they listen to something, to broadcast to a movie, they understand like nearly 90% or more. But the problem is, is when they want to, to speak to others, they don't have, let's say, the courage or uh, mm -hmm. they feel discouraged because they think that their accent or their pronunciation is not, is not that good. They think that if they can speak like Mary, then they're bad. Uh, oh, they no, think no, 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 nothing like that. Yeah, this is a psychological. I mean, mm -hmm. people, they have this in your, their minds. They, they, they think that if we can speak like native speakers, if we can pronounce or articulate as they do, then we're bad, even if we can speak. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? We need to remember that English is a tool. 
It's not, yeah. it's not something to, to distinguish British from Americans or from people from other parts of the world. English is a language and we use that to communicate. So we have to make communication possible. And as teachers, we need to spread the word and we need to say, hey, don't worry, we're trying to achieve some communication here. Okay, we're trying to... Our goal is not being perfect, exactly. It's not being perfect. Our goal is communicating. It's being able to speak about this or about that in a language that is not our own, which is not That's easy. The question, Mary, should we worry about accents? Should we worry about sounding like Americans, about like British? Should we really worry about that? Because some people, no. they, they set this as a goal. If I, no. I, I'm not able to sound like Americans, like British, speak like no. them, articulate like them, then I failed. No, absolutely not. Anyways, what is a British accent? There are like 30 different accents in Great Britain. Yeah. So, no, 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 no. Um, and also, we confuse good pronunciation with accent. It's not the same. Good pronunciation is what makes the language understandable. That's what we should aim for. So, accent is like, okay, I look at you and I'm like, yeah, okay, he's got brown eyes. It's the same with the accent. The accent is part of you, is it? it's part of who you are. But we should never try to get rid of our identity, should we? Yeah, no, sure. We should try to, to pronounce as well as possible. We should try to learn as much vocabulary as possible. We should try to, mm, to be able to communicate in the best way possible. But never to change ourselves. If you have a Spanish accent, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree because um, our goal, after all, is to use English to communicate. So mm -hmm. uh, if we can't sound like Americans, that, mm -hmm. that, that's actually that's a reality. You never sound like them. You never be native. That, that's a reality. Yeah, exactly. You, you, exactly. you can't like uh, say, you can't ignore your your identity. Where yeah, you exactly. Came. Anyway, yes. what do you why even, what do you want to why do you want that? Spanish. Even if you sound like uh, British, you're still Spanish, right? Oh yeah, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, for <laughs> I'm <sure>. proud. <laughs> Because some some people they, they think that if they could sound like some like like uh, Americans or like British, then uh, that's it. It's like they no, have no, a no, no, but that's not true. This is this is what I am. This is what I am. This is where you and are. It's true. Yeah. I'm, bil I'm bilingual. I speak two languages, but that's it. I'm speaking Spanish. My yeah, always be. So, we'll just start from uh, Spanish and uh, English. I'm learning some Italian because I love it. Great. <laughs> I'm learning some Great. Italian, yeah. Yeah, but learning another, learning a new language actually is is a challenge for for people. Uh, it's, it's not it's, something, you, especially if you if you don't. Like if you uh, if you didn't start uh, learning it from an early age, it's, it's really hard. Yeah, for for for, it for kids, it's 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 more it's much easier to, to learn to make a, to make kids learn. But uh, for adults, it's it's pretty difficult. So uh, Mary, uh, this is actually uh, uh, one of the, the the biggest problems that people face. Mm -hmm. Um, being shy when they want to speak. Uh, some people, even when they, they find that partner to practice with, they're still not having the courage, not being able to, to, to speak to him. Um, do you have some, something that we can do to overcome this being shy, uh, not being able to, to communicate with, with people? Mm -hmm. Every person is different, but again, we need to find the, the way to break this wall to make it fall so we can start really improving, okay, brushing up on our English, for example. So I would recommend, mm, I would recommend, okay, let's say some people have the problem of mm, not being very comfortable speaking the language. But not because they don't know the words, okay? It's a lack of self-confidence sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's, it's a lack of vocabulary. But we can work on that. 
But when it comes to, to self-confidence, that's the part that they need to work on. And only themselves can. Some people say speaking in front of the mirror, okay, can, can make you more, more self, self-conscious of what you're doing, let's say. And they yeah. gain confidence this way. Yeah. Some others like reading out loud. Some others find someone who talk to, someone they like, or someone with the same interests as themselves. So it depends on the person. Yeah, because uh, now big, a big question or a uh, question that I usually I always get from, from my followers is, I understand, but I can't speak. <laughs> When people talk to me, I 100% understand their questions. But when it comes to speaking, to replaying to them, here it comes the difficulty. I can't speak. This is the lack, of course, the answer to this is the lack of, of practice. Um, Uh, because you are able, you have this skill of listening, you understand it, comprehension is 100%, but you never speak. So even if you still watch movies for 100 years, you won't be able to speak. You have to step forward, you have to move to the next step, because understanding is only a step towards uh, mastering the language. Understanding is not everything. Sometimes when we understand, we think that we can speak, Some people, they, they get shocked. Uh, I know some, some students here in Morocco because, you know, in Morocco, we, um, we study French from, from an mm -hmm. early age. I mean, from the age of eight years old. Okay. So from eight years old to 18, that's nearly 10 years. So 10 years of learning the French language and students, when they graduate, uh, they are unable to produce correct sentences. Okay. Uh, and but they understand the problem is that they understand 100%. Uh, when they want to produce be it writing or speaking they find very big difficulty and this is due to the lack of of, um, of practice of practice yeah they get the full mark they get 20 out of 20 but when it, in writing but, yeah, but on paper on paper yeah on paper yeah uh, and this is actually uh, a major issue. Uh, I struggle with this even in my class. I teach teenagers and I teach kids as well. Mm -hmm. And I see that some of my students are great when it comes to speaking. They, they can speak, they can communicate. But when it comes to writing, they fail. And the opposite. Some of them, they write perfectly. But when it comes to speaking, they can't even express, they can't even uh, say, I, can I go to the bathroom? So this is a big issue, actually. I think there must, there must be a balance between the two. Speaking. There should be. There should be. But again, it depends on the type of learner you are and what have you been exposed to. Because we normally are supposed to read the English. We tend to understand more and to be more able to, to write the language rather than speaking it. So it depends yeah. on what type of learner, of learner you are and what type of... Well, yeah, what type of text, of text, yeah, like yeah. spoken or written text you've been supposed to, I guess. But in your class, in, the, in where you teach, how do you uh, get this balance between speaking and writing and all this? Do you have some specific mm -hmm. methods? How do you deal with your students? I want to know what, what's going on there. Okay, okay, so <laughs> first things first, yeah. 100% English. Yeah, for sure. I agree. In class, it's just English, what we speak. Uh, Mary, even for, for beginners? Even for beginners? Yeah. For adults? I think some, some adults um, that are very, very beginners, if you use 100% English, I think that might be a challenge. It is. It is. Yeah. It takes more effort from the teacher yeah. than it takes from students. I have to say that... Yeah, they don't okay. understand the words. They don't understand, like, nothing. So you have to find ways to motivate. But yeah, I think yeah. Basic, but there are many words in English. There are many, 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 many words in English that look like the Spanish word. Yeah. So, the same so word in English. Yes. Yes, yes. I, I guess it, well, it comes from, from Latin in part. So yeah. if you tend to use these words... And with mimic, if you're mimicking, if you are 
using your nonverbal communication with them, they can get to understand. Again, it takes effort, it takes time, it's not comfortable. Yeah. But they start learning in a more efficient way. Like, why would they join my classes if I start speaking Spanish to them? They're yeah, not being exposed to the language. Yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, definitely so, yeah. English. English first. I agree. I agree. Uh, I don't like to use mother tongue in class because mm -hmm. that that creates an environment. It's like, the, especially for teenagers and kids, it, mm -hmm. it's as if they're still at home. So if you're mm -hmm. speaking to them in their mother tongue, it's like they don't have to go to school. That uh, teaching them would be useful. But using uh, English 100%, it gives you the chance to like um, they are learning uh, they have one hour for example they are learning all the one hour since the start mm -hmm. you speak to them in English they're listening yes. to you they're listening to your instructions in English so you make use of every single minute in your class and this and is listening to other students you learn not only by by listening to the teacher but listening to to other people who are in the same process as you for sure for sure. So some teachers, they prefer to use their mother tongue, and this, mm -hmm. this is their opinion. But I think that the learning process will be slow with, with using your mother tongue. I think so. so. I think so. So the same thing for uh, when people ask me about uh, watching movies, they say, well, should I watch movies with, with Arabic subtitles, with Spanish subtitles, with French subtitles, and English voice? Then I say, that's no. not useful. Do not, not do not, yeah. no, your brain, after 10 minutes, is just yeah. reading, because yeah, it's, it's reading. the most comfortable thing to do. So, you stop listening, you stop doing any effort, you just read. So, no, I don't think that's sufficient. Yeah, because our brains are lazy, so they just yeah, 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 uh, we are. look for things that are comfortable to them. So, uh, your brain, after two minutes or three minutes, they will just start reading. They will not focus on what they're hearing. On the other hand, some people, they prefer to watch movies, English movies with English subtitles. Um, what do you think about this? That's good to practice pronunciation. So, you yeah, read... But um, since English is not pronounced the same the same way it is written, you can really pick up some pronunciation, some sounds, um, even start distinguishing between accents by doing this. So if you yeah. if you you listen what they're saying and you read and you're like, oh wow, this word is not pronounced the way I thought it would. No, I think then you're learning some pronunciation. Yeah, sorry. Some people they they can't read and watch at the same time. Uh, don't you think that sometimes watching and reading at the same time is a really hard task? It is, it is, especially for a beginner. Compared to just listening. I prefer, me personally, if someone asks me, I, I recommend him to just watch the movie with no subtitles at all. Because uh, when you watch with subtitles, you don't enjoy the movie, first of all. And you don't learn much, in my opinion, I think that you don't learn much because your brain is focusing on two skills at the same time. And I think to find this balance between the two, between reading and listening, and to synchronize, you know, this mm -hmm. synchronization between what you see written yes. and what you hear, that's pretty difficult. And sometimes for beginners, it's, it's, it's nearly impossible to read. It's a big effort. It's only going to work for a number of minutes. It's not going to be for one hour. No, 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 no. It's a very good exercise, very tiring, but it's short time. Like, you cannot do that for, for half an hour. Impossible. No. It's true. Yeah, it's true. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you give me just one minute, please? Oh, yeah, of course. It's okay. <laughs>
it's okay. It's okay. No worries. Yeah. So we were speaking about what exactly? About watching movies. How to watch a film. Yeah. So watching movies actually is a great thing. I think mm -hmm. that's, uh, you'll never uh, expect someone to learn the language without watching movies. We all no, watch movies. Only, only by doing that, no. no. So we need to watch movies and uh, to make use of these movies, not just watch them for fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you don't expect a student to, to learn only by watching movies, by watching a film. No, 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 no. Well, this is a good exercise to practice. And to, let's say, to, to widen your vocabulary bank, your personal vocabulary bank. Yeah, uh, how do you, uh, you said that you taught kids before. Uh, what are the methods that you use in kids, apart from games and uh, songs? Actually, I found out that kids, they behave the way you treat them. So... If you're treating a kid like, oh, oh, how are you? Like, oh, poor, poor little boy. He behaves like a, like a kid. He does. But if you treat them like a big boy, like, okay, well done. We'll go for the next one. <laughs> they really yeah. like it and they feel encouraged. So um, I try to, to make them feel that they are doing something very positive and um, and that they're big kids. They like feeling they're grown-ups. So, so that's one of the methods. Uh, if I can call it a method, it's more of a psychology trick that I use with them. Kids, they learn fast, right? Yeah, they do. They do. They learn super fast. And they're like, no, we'll review this again. We already know. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, but they get bored like, very quickly. Say again, say again, sorry? They get bored. They get bored? Oh, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. Well, here we are to, to prevent that from happening. Yeah, if you use the same methods over and over again, they get bored. I mean, kids need a routine to follow. Indeed, yeah. I like breaking the routine. Okay, I'm one of the teachers who, if I'm getting bored in class, I'm like, Jesus, when is it coming to an end? No. So if I'm getting bored, I cannot imagine my students. So I'm like all the time changing. Yeah, and you should change all the time. Yes, but with kids, sometimes it's like, okay, let's do this before. Like, we're going to watch something before the class. And they're like, when do we pick up the book? I'm like, oh, don't worry, relax. <laughs> mm. But I found that kids like routines. Uh, but they like little, very, very small changes in that routine we've got. So, yeah, you know, changing in the minutes, right? Exactly. So, you need to have a routine with them. Like, this comes first, this comes later, at the end of the class we play. And yeah, just so applying very small changes there, because if not, they, they get confused. Yeah, let's see some, uh, some questions, if we have some questions. So, what do you think about this? I have a problem with tenses. How can I resolve this problem, please? Mm hmm. Tenses, him. Okay, this person means, I guess, uh, when to use, for example, uh, present perfect. Yeah. Things like that. Okay, so when you get or when you achieve a certain level of English, sometimes you need to read what are the uses of a certain, of a certain tense and practice. I, well, I recommend to use first um, a very mechanical exercise or a couple of very mechanical exercises to get familiar with, um, with the structure. And after that, just no mechanical ones, like telling a story or writing something about you or telling somebody something about you using that tense. Okay? Yeah. And do that, do that, one day after that, and one week after that, okay? So with, your, with the idea in your head, I'm going to practice this today. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so you are able to to use that whenever you need in a real life conversation. So, it's mechanical practice first, and later open practice, but repeatedly over time. So you're able to stick the new knowledge here. So you do that individually with every tense. Yes, it's hard work again. Yeah, sure. Let's just check. So. Okay, for me, I watch movies with both American and British accents. Does that sort of affect my pronunciation skills? I think it does. It does, yes, it affects. It does affect, mm. indeed. It does, but it's not going to make you unable to speak English. So, I, I think that's fine. That's fine. That's totally okay. So, you're exposed to two different accents. Yeah, for sure. So, Mary, it's been like one hour. Oh, already? Time passes with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, I thank you so much for uh, for this wonderful life. It's been yeah, that's actually nice talking to you here. And uh, people, they like they like listening to you and uh, your tips. I'm sorry, I speak too much sometimes. <laughs> I like yeah. never, I'm never quiet. <laughs> yeah, would you like to say something before we finish this time? Never give up, guys. Never yeah. give up. Okay? Sure. Every effort pays off. It is a long process and there's many people learning in the same path as you. So please do not give up. It's just a matter of time and a matter of finding the way that works for you. So never, never, never do that. Never give up. Of course. Thank you so much, Mary. And see Thank you again. You. Of course, yeah. of course. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Guys, it's been nice talking to you. Thank you so much for watching this live. See you again in your life. And this will be saved, of course.